That's pretty. That was very pretty. Thank you, Duana. I love to hear those chimes. Those are, those are neat. Good to see you this morning. Good morning to all of you. Uh, good, good to have you here this morning. Uh, a few announcements here in the bulletin. Uh, we have uh, that uh, we have our Deer Creek Cluster Revival coming up. Now, let me share. Let me share with you how to read this chart. I had about five or six people say, "Well, now when?" And I even had someone from another church that I had shared this chart with, and they said, "When well, I?" It's at our church, but when? I said, "Okay, well, let's look at this." On the left-hand side, it says North Franklin Parish, Dr. Gavin Spinney, and he will be speaking at those churches at the time indicated on the right. On the right is South Franklin Parish with Brother Casey Johnson, who will be speaking with the churches on the right at the time indicated at the column on the left. <laughs> so the time is the same. You're going to have two men who are going to be preaching at the same time at different churches. And so you can determine here which one you're closest to or which one you would like to, uh, if you want to follow the same man through, throughout the week. Uh, but you have a choice there. Uh, I, I'm saying you have a choice. So, uh, but on Wednesday night, the thir 23rd of February at 7 p.m., uh, Brother Casey Johnson will be at our church. And so we're looking forward to having him here. Uh, some of you have heard him before. A uh, very dynamic uh, preacher. Uh, but we look forward to that, uh, that time where it's at our, uh, our facilities on that night. Uh, but I encourage you to pick, you know, pick a night, pick a church, and make it through the week uh, when that comes up, February 20th through the 25th. Also, need to give you an update on Mr. Larry Connor. Mr. Larry, uh, Brother Larry Connor, had, uh, had to have two stints put in recently. Uh, now, he'd had some years ago, and they lasted longer than the doctor said they would, so that's a good thing, but he recently had two stents put in again. Uh, he is doing well, uh, but we ha I want to let you know where we are. We're, we're about ready to send this to him, uh, and we're sitting at, uh, or we're sitting at, we're not sitting, y'all are sitting, I'm standing. Uh, we have given toward his heating and air unit that went out uh, $495. Uh, so if somebody would like to make that an even uh, 500, that'd be great. Uh, but we, we, we do want to send that to him soon uh, so he can have that and have that paid for. Uh, as you know, we need the heat. My goodness, on certain days, we need the heat. Let me also encourage you, there's a prayer guide in the bulletin. Uh, to, uh, tomorrow, begin praying for, pray for Brother Gavin Spinney, uh, Tuesday for Casey Johnson, and then through the week. Uh, there's items to pray for. On the 17th, which is a Thursday, uh, the missions office will have a time of prayer at the missions office at 10 a.m. So if you'd like to be a part of that, uh, you can come and pray there. Uh, if, you, if not, that's fine, but there's a kind of a prayer guide, suggested prayer guide for you uh, to begin praying for revival. Let me uh, remind you also the Psalms study will continue next Sunday. So we'll pick up where we left off last Sunday, looking at the Psalms. Uh, and so uh, be, in be in tune to that, uh, that bit of news for you. Uh, and then I think, uh, I think the 22nd, the God of Deliverance study with the ladies will be finished uh, on that day. If you're visiting with us, there's a portion of your bulletin we'd love for you to fill out. You can just tear that off, fill that out, place it in the box in the foyer. It is good to be in the house of the Lord today as we worship Him, as we sing to Him, and as we sing about Him. So let's worship together this morning.
Gracious Lord, as we come here today to worship you and proclaim you as our God, we do cling to your everlasting love. Your love that was there at creation was there at the cross at Calvary, and the love that we feel with your presence today. Lord, we just pray that each one of us will sense and feel that love through our times of trouble we will feel comfort and strength in the times of sickness we will feel your hand reach out and touch us lord we just ask that each one of us in all of our thoughts and all that we do your love is reflected so others can see you through us in your name we pray amen
vintages of love like this. There's a place where mercy reigns and never dies. There's a place where streams of grace flow deep and wide. Where all the love I've ever known like a flood comes flowing down at the cross at the cross I surrender my life I'm in all of you I'm in all of you where your love ran red and my sins washed white I owe all to you I owe all to you, Jesus. There's a place where sin and shame are powerless. Where the heart has peace with God and forgiveness. Where all the love I've ever found Comes like a flood, comes flowing down At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life I'm in all of you I'm in all of you, where your love ran red and my sins washed white. I'm in all of you, I owe all to you. Here my hope is found, here on holy ground. Here I bow down, here I bow down, here arms open wide, here. You saved my life, here I bow down, here I bow. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in all of you, I'm in all of you. Where your love ran red and my sin washed white, I owe all to you, I owe all to you. I owe all to you, I owe all to you, Jesus. Your love ran red, your love ran red. God is so good, and God loves us so much, and no, no, we do not deserve it. For the very fact that we exist, that God made us, He's chosen to love us. He has chosen to love us. It's amazing. It's amazing. Would you pray with me this morning? Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you. We'll bow our hearts and our heads before you, acknowledging you as Almighty God. It's you that we bow to. It's you that we worship. It's your love that made it possible. 
for our, our sins to be forgiven, for us to be in right relationship with you, for us to be able to go to heaven. You made that possible through Christ, your Son, your amazing love. We don't understand it. But Father, we receive it. We gratefully receive it. Thank you, God, for loving us. Lord, we pray for those who are in need in our community. Some in need physically, in need of help, in need of food. Some in need of friendships. Some in need of comfort over a loss, maybe a loss of a loved one, a loss of a job, a loss of a relationship. Father, meet them at the very point of their need. Help them to realize who you are. Lord, if, by me, if, if in meeting the need, you need to use one of us, Lord, find us available to you and willing willing and available to do whatever you call on us to do. Lord, I thank you for the fact that we're able to gather freely in this building today and worship you, to focus our minds on who you are, to remember that you are in charge and that we're to lean on you, trust in you, place our faith in you. Because when we look at this world, we think, oh my, we cannot make it without you. Lord, find us being obedient to your voice. And Lord, in those moments that we choose not to be obedient, Father, convict us through your Holy Spirit. Help us to know, yes, we, we, we chose incorrectly. And we need to come to you and get that right with you. Father, thank you for loving us enough to lead us in our lives in this world. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. As you uh, recognize, we're singing songs about love, God's love today. So join in as we stand and sing together. <clears throat>
Dr. Bill Reynolds wrote and arranged that song. Dr. Bill Reynolds was the professor that I had when I had to take the one music class that was required of Master of Divinity students at Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. And uh, I wish they had uh, required more than one. Uh, but you would hear all, the, all those preacher boys moan if I said that. But... I just, I believe in a well-rounded education. I mean, goodness, I think we ought to know all we can know about what we're about to step into. Uh, but Dr. Reynolds, very, uh, a great man, a serious man about, uh, about God, about music, uh, truly, truly understood the power of music in a worship service uh, and tried to help us Preacher boys understand that as well and understand the need uh, and the importance of music. And I have, I've always told myself, you can always pick out the preachers who, ha who did not have Dr. Reynolds. Because they, they, the music was in their way and they, it was just in their way. They were ready to preach and they didn't need all that. So they thought. I was glad I had Dr. Reynolds. Uh, of course, I probably would have come to that conclusion anyway because of my mom and my dad <laughs> being in music, church music as well. This morning, the amazing love 
of God. The world in which we live is one that naturally or allows us to naturally live and highlight differences between us. We find differences in between us in politics, race, financial status, looks, talents. We find we find that we sometimes put people in boxes. We separate people out and we say, well, they're this type of person, they're this type of person. And, and in reality, one box that we may tick in their lives does not make up who they are. People are more than one area or aspect or characteristic of their lives. They just are. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, if, if someone dis- looked at you and decided, well, you know what? Because, uh, because you drive that certain car, you believe this way, and you think this way, and you act this way, just because of the car you drove. That's not fair, is it? That's not fair at all. That's not fair at all. I was watching a comedy this last week where the, uh, a man gave his father a Cadillac, a brand new Cadillac. And it almost destroyed his relationship in his community. Because everybody said, oh, well, he thinks he's, you know, he thinks he's better than everybody else. He's got a Cadillac now. And he tried to explain, my son bought it. My son bought it. And, they, and they, he, was, he happened to be president of his neighborhood association. And so they accused him of stealing money out of the pot to buy the Cadillac. And all of this because of the car he drove. And I thought, man... Isn't that interesting how we take people and put them in a little box and we we expect them to act a certain way and to be a certain way all the time. We define them and we do not give them room to grow or change. I've seen that happen as well. Oh, well, that's who they are. And we don't even allow. I have had people tell me, well, that's the way they are. That person is that way. They've always been that way. They're never going to change. I believe in the changing power of God. I believe in the changing power that He has to, cha- to take a heart, to change the heart, and make it new. I may be weird. I may be alone in my belief in that, but I believe it. I just believe that God can change a heart. And so for someone to say, oh, well, you know, they're never going to change, I don't believe that. I don't believe it. I don't care. I don't care how much you try to prove to me, oh, they're never going to change. They can change they can with the help of God but once we've labeled someone not smart we tend to keep them in that box as being not smart we don't allow them to get smart we don't allow them to grow to be educated in any way in fact that's called tight casting when you start looking at actors an actor who's played a role for a very long time well they wind up not being able to play other types of roles because they've been typecast. Oh, he played the dumb one on this show. He'll play a dumb one on this show, and he'll play a dumb one over here too because that's what that, it's just him. No, he's an actor. He's an actor. This morning I want us to look at the love of someone who has placed us all in the same box. But he allows us the opportunity to change. In fact, he's the one that provides the possibility of change through an act of His love. If you are able and willing, I'm going to ask that you stand in honor of the reading of the Word of God from Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. For while we were still helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous man, Though perhaps for the good man someone would dare even to die. But God demonstrates his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. May those words sink in our hearts today. I invite you to be seated. Man. First thing we see here, or that I see in this verse, is that God sent Jesus to die at the right time. Verse 6, for while we were still helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. The word translated helpless, or yet without strength, it may say in your, in your version of the Bible. 
It carries with it the meaning of being morally weak and helpless. Morally weak, helpless. For while we were morally weak and helpless, while, while we didn't know what was right and didn't know to do it, while we were morally weak and helpless, Christ died for us. There was a time when there was, a nothing, there was nothing that a person could do to have their sins permanently forgiven. You look in the Old Testament, you see God's people, the Israelites, and they had a whole sacrificial system that they had to go through on a regular basis. They had to sacrifice something so that their sins could be forgiven. But they weren't permanently forgiven because here you came along and you sinned again. Well, then that was another sin and it had to be permanently, you know, it had to be forgiven that there at that point and then you're going to sin again and then it just it was a system that was set up but it was a system that pointed to a day a time where there would be an ultimate sacrifice a perfect sacrifice that would for all of time permanently atone for sin but so it's the, that sacrificial system was there. The people were living through that. The plan we were on before Jesus came was to be continually following the law. Continually trying to follow the law. Oh, you got to follow the law. Here's the, here's, the, here's the law of God. They had the Ten Commandments and they were supposed to follow these. And they were supposed to try their best to follow these. They kept messing up because what? They're human. They're not perfect. So they couldn't perfectly fulfill the law. And so they, they're just this constant thing kept moving along. Uh, this is something you and I cannot do. We cannot perfectly follow the law. The, but the second part of verse 6, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. In due time, at the right time, when the time was right, Christ died for the ungodly. He did not die for them when they wanted it. He did not die for them because they demanded it. He died for them when the time was right under the authority of God himself. The time was right. God's timing is the best timing. Now you may sit and say amen to that, but there are times when you don't think he's right. Amen? You think, well, the timing would have been better if... Oh. <laughs> this is where we trust in the Lord. We trust that what he's doing is the right thing. Because he's God. And because when he looks down on the earth, he sees the big picture. He sees the big picture through time. He sees what, he knows what you're going to do tomorrow. You think you know. Oh, I'm going to get up and go to work. I'm going to get up and do this. Got errands to run, blah, blah, blah. You think you know. But God knows. God knows. He sees the big picture and he's looking down on all of us. And he knows. Well, under the authority of God, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. There was an orthopedic surgeon who was moving into a new office uh, across town. He decided to, he, he, you know, when you're moving things, you move them the best you can, you know, uh, and you do what you can do. And some things you want to carry in your car because you don't want them broken. You don't trust the movers. You're like, okay, wait a minute. I'm going to make sure. Okay. Well, this orthopedic surgeon had a display skeleton. And so he placed it in the front seat of his car. Concerned not to have the skeleton fall, he didn't pay attention to his driving, and he ran a stop sign with a policeman looking. And the blue lights came on. There you go. You know how that happens. Oh, well, I mean, I'm, oh, that, I'm sorry. I didn't, I'm, you've seen it on TV. I know it's never happened to you, but you've seen it on TV. The blue lights come on behind you. And, all right, well, the blue light pulled up behind him. And as this traffic cop stopped to the driver's window, the physician said, by trying to explain what happened, I'm a doctor, I'm taking him to my new office. The policeman replied, I hate to tell you, doc, but I think you're too late. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Listen, God is never too late. He is never too late. We say, well, now it would have been better. No, we think, we, 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 we. It's God, and God knows. And God is never late. He's always right on time. His timing in sending Jesus to die for our sins was perfect because it came from God. God is perfect. Notice also for whom he died. This is very important. At the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Did he die for the good people only? The Bible tells us he died for the ungodly. God's son died for let me put it very plain, bad people, the bad people. 
the good people and the bad people. He died for them. These were those who did not worship God. These were those who were not even looking for a way for their sins to be forgiven. These were people who did not even care about God. And God sent His Son anyway. And He died for everyone anyway. He did it anyway. God's love reaches past their ungodliness and reaches for their hearts. He loves them in spite of their sin. In spite of their sin. Loving people in spite of how they look, in spite of how they act, in spite of their sin, God said, I love you. Now that's an amazing love. That is an amazing love. Look at verse 7. For one will hardly die for a righteous man. Now, this is, now, remember who's writing this. This is Paul writing to the Christians in Rome. This is Paul, the law man, the one who, who has that lawyer mind, who has that, uh, that logic, logical thinking going on in his head. And so he's, uh, he's trying to prove his point. For one would hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for the good man someone would dare to even, even to die. Paul is arguing here, he says, you, you will scarcely find anyone who's willing to sacrifice his life. Well, perhaps a few people might go as far as to do so. There might be a few, but God shows his love for us in Christ sacrificing his life for those who were neither righteous nor good, but ungodly sinners. Goodness. Certainly, it's not the norm in our lives, in our world, for someone to willingly die for another. That's not a normal thing that happens. But Jesus the Christ did die for us all. He died for you. He was willing to die so that you would have that opportunity to have your sins forgiven and to be in right relationship with God. He he wanted to do this. He was sent to do this. He was sent to do this. God sent him from heaven to earth. That was the mission. That was the mission. And we see that he fulfilled the mission. Who do you know that would die for the ungodly? Who do you know that would die for uh, someone who has committed murder? Who do you know that would do something, go that far and say, hey, wait a minute. I'll take their punishment. All those on death row, who do you know that would say, hey, wait a minute, I'll take their place? The only person I know is Jesus. Because I don't know anybody. I don't know anybody that would say, hey, I'll do it. I don't know anybody. Jesus is the only one I know. Christ died at the right time for you and for me. The second thing. I see. God loves in spite of a person's sin. Look at verse 8. But God demonstrates His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He demonstrated, He commendeth His love toward us. What love is this? What kind of love is this? Is this, is this a, oh, I love how that, that house looks. Oh, I love that house. Uh, or is this a, I love pecan praline ice cream type of love? No. That's not what he's talking about here. What is this love based on? This love is the agape love of God. This is the self-giving love of God. This is a love that makes distinctions, choosing its objects freely. It is especially the love of a higher for a lower. It is an active, not self-seeking love. This word is in the present tense. It carries with it the meaning of continual action. God continually shows His love toward us. Continually shows His love in the death of Christ. He wants us to know how He loves us so much that He had His Son die for us. For us. He did not just love those who were alive on the day Christ died. His love does not stop with them. His love is a continual love all through time, for all of mankind. It's for all of us. It's for all of us. Even today in 2022, Jesus didn't die way back then just for those people in that time period. The continual love that God has for us, that what, what happened on that cross, the, 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 the results of the cross come all the way through time. And God's love comes all the way through time. Right here to 2022. And God says to you, I love you. 
I love you. He says that through the cross that happened so long ago. Think about this. God's love is not based upon how we look. I am so glad. God looked at Craig and said, you know what? I love him anyway. I love him anyway. I did a good job, but, uh, you know, he's, everybody's got to be different, Craig. You know, everybody's got to look different. <laughs> but I love you anyway. God loves us in spite of how we look, how, what we think, how we act, what we wear, how we believe in our politics. Most all of those can change. A lot of that can change. But God's love remains constant. God's love remains constant. We can always come back to Him and know that He loves us. We don't have to wonder. We don't have to hope. We don't have to pray. We don't have to guess. We know. When Christ died on that cross, He proved it to us. He showed us. He demonstrated it to us. He showed us on that cross that He loves us. How much He loves us, He showed us. The Creator God has chosen to love us. Wow. That's, that, that's hard, to, hard to get in our heads sometimes. When God looks at us, He does not divide us into separate little boxes. Some worth saving, others not worth saving. He puts us all in one big box and He puts a label on top of it. Savable. Savable. Each one of these is savable. He does not see any of us being more worthy or valuable than another. He sees us as people in need of forgiveness, in need of His love, in need of His constant presence in our lives. Because of how He sees us, that's why He sent Jesus. His love is a most amazing love. I ran across this by Richard C. Halverson. He wrote this. He said, there's nothing you can do to make God love you more. There's nothing you can do to make God love you less. His love is unconditional, impartial, everlasting, infinite, and perfect. Wow. Do you long for a love like that? Look, when you, I had the little thing up at the beginning on the first slide. Do you love me? Yes, no, or maybe. You remember that? It, 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 I don't know what grade you, you know, it was for you that maybe one of those notes was passed to you or maybe you passed one of those notes to somebody else hoping they'd you know, at least check maybe. <laughs> I always thought that was funny. There's hope in maybe. <laughs> so, hey, maybe. But I always looked at that and I thought, wow. You know, there's a, a longing to be loved. A longing to be accepted for who we are in this world. And when you're young, you're looking for somebody that will accept you in that way. You're looking for somebody out there that will just accept you for who you are. Not because I believe this way. Not because I drive this car. Not because I was educated at this institution. Not because I'm this color. Not because I'm this race. Not because I, you know, I have all fingers on my hands or whatever. Look. We're all hoping that there's someone out there that will just say to us, I love you. And that's what God says. I love you. Listen, God made us. You might say, well, you know, oh, if this is some kind of parental kind of love, then they got to, he's got to love us because he made us. (laughs) He's got to because he made us. Well, I wonder I think He has chosen to love us. Yes, He made us. Does that mean He has to love us? I don't know. Go think that out. I just know that He's chosen to. I just know that He's chosen to love us. And I am thankful for that fact. The amazing fact about the death of Christ is that He died while we were yet sinners. Wow. I can understand someone doing something heroic. To save a good person's life. I can see that. But to make it possible for sinners to be saved. To be forgiven. To save the lives of those who seem to not even care. I think that just sounds a little crazy. To save the lives of those who are against you. Is just not the nature of human. human, Humankind. 
Base human, <laughs> human, listen to this. Base thinking, just that, that, that base thinking that we have. We just think about, you know, our basic instincts about things. Or whatever. We're not, uh, if somebody bad has treated us very poorly, 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 over and over and over and over, and you have an opportunity to save their life or to save them from harm, where are you in that? Now, look, that's a decision. You, <laughs> that's between you and the Lord, but where are you in that? Are you, are you thinking, well, they deserve it. They deserve that. Or would you step in and say, wait a minute, no, no, no. I'm going to make it possible for them not to be harmed, not to die. God did this anyway. There are people who do not like Him, people who do not care about Him, people who speak against Him, and God loves them. That didn't make sense. No, it doesn't. It's hard. I don't, I don't fully understand the love of God. A God who would love people anyway, even if they don't love Him, that's the God who's, who loves us. That's the one who loves us. That's the one who reaches down. That's the, the one whose love reaches down from the heart of, of the Creator, of him, Himself, and touches the soul of a person. Amen. And that's it. That's what it is. Where, where, where are we when we fathom, when we try to think about the love of God? Now, don't mishear me. I've had, I've had uh, uh, it, all, it never fails. There's, it seems to be there's always someone, if you preach too much on the love of God, and you never think, you never talk about the justice of the Lord, you never talk about how his hate for sin, there's always a thought in some people's minds, that everybody's going to think that God's a God of love and that he, doesn't, he, he doesn't care about sin. Well, no. Of course he cares about sin. That's why he sent Jesus. That's why he sent Jesus. He cares about sin because he cares about you and he doesn't like sin. He's against it and he doesn't want it in your life. He doesn't want it to be a part of your life. And so he sent Jesus so that you could be forgiven of your sin. He loves you, yes, but because He loves you, He did something about it. He did something about your sin. He made it possible to be forgiven of it. So those who accept His Son as their Savior are forgiven. The Holy Spirit lives in their heart, guides them to live like Jesus. Just because God loves you doesn't give you, you know, doesn't mean you have a free pass to heaven. He, he wants to forgive you of your sins. He wants to forgive you of those sins, and He wants to do that. That's a, he longs for you to come to Him and be sorry for your sins, ask for forgiveness. But His love never stops. His love is ever-present. And I, you know, I guess I have assumed a lot when it comes to the love of God, and I've assumed a lot when it comes to His people because I have this idea that you know God is a God of love, but you know what? We need to be reminded of that. We, mean, we need to be reminded of His love, how much He loved us. He sent His Son to die on this cross. For, for us, the Bible tells us, Christ died for us. Christ died at the right time for you, and He loves you despite the fact that you are a sinner. He loves you. And he wants, he, he, he calls out and he says, come unto me, come. Call on the name of the Lord and you can be saved. Come, accept him into your heart. Repent, turn away from your sin. Walk away, say, look, God, I am sorry. I've done things that have made you not happy <laughs> when it comes to me. And I know that and I'm asking, dear God, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Be in charge of my life. It's amazing. When we allow God to be in charge of our lives, it is amazing that that's what happens. That <laughs> sounds so simple. But it's amazing. If you allow Him to be in charge, if you allow Him to move in, to never leave you, because that's what's going to happen. If you ask him into your heart, he's, he's going to come in. He's never going to leave. He's not living in a motor home. He's not living in a tent. He's living in a home. And he's right in your heart. And he's going to be there. And he's going to lead you in this life. He's going to help you to know how to handle things in this world. 
and you become a witness for Him. You become a witness of His power, of His grace, of His love to other people. When they see, ah, there's a change in that person. Something's different. I'm watching them and consistently they are doing things that are right. They didn't do that. Used to, they never were like that. But I'm watching their lives and when they mess up, they get right. When they mess up, they apologize. They go and they make it right. They talk to the Lord about it. And they make it right. There's something different about that person. May the amazing love of God be evident in your life. May it, may it be grasped by your heart and your mind today. I can't make that happen, but I'm praying that it will. I'm praying that you will grasp the love of God in its fullness and realize what He did for you and for me. Because He chose to love us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, O oh God, for this day. I thank you for your great love for us. We do not fully understand it. And I know we can't fully grasp it. But Lord, we can accept it on the basis of your word. Your word tells us that you love us. Your, world, your, your word tells us that your son Jesus died on the cross for us. We, we can accept that. We can accept that. It's in your word. Lord, help us. Help us. Maybe there's someone here today that says, look, I, I need this. I need this Jesus in my heart. Maybe today you're thinking, I, this, is, this is, yeah, this is what I need to do. In just a few moments, we're going to sing a hymn of response. And during that hymn of response, would you just come? Maybe you're here this morning and you're thinking, you know what? Wait a minute, preacher. I, I, I've got some questions. I've got some more questions about this. I'm praying for you today that the Lord will speak to your heart and help you to answer those questions that you may have. Maybe you're sitting here this morning and you know you have a loved one, a friend, a relative, a neighbor that you know does not know the love of God. They, they, don't, know an ex they don't have a relationship with Him. Would you take a moment to pray for them? Father, we thank You for Your great love for us. We thank You for loving us anyway. Even though we disappoint you sometimes, even though we, even sometimes we, we act like heathens, we act like people that don't believe in you. Father, thank you for loving us anyway. Continue to speak to us through your Holy Spirit, Lord. I know you will, but I'm just asking, yes, keep it up, God. Help us to stay on the right path. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We're going to sing a hymn of response near to the heart of God. Let's stand together this morning. The Lord is leading you to come. Would you do that? Would you come during as we sing?
as you leave this place, know that you have a God who loves you. You don't have to hope, guess, pray, or wonder. He does. He does. Have a blessed day today as you dismiss this morning. Thank you.